Hey, bunny, guess what? What? Uh, no, you have to actually guess. Mm, uh, when you were in school and, and you would reach under your desk and you would feel those bumps and you couldn't tell if it was gum or boogers. Bumps. Bumps under the desk. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. We have received your final answers. <laughs> Jeannie, your answer was 12. 12. And Bunny, your final answer was bumps under the desk. Yes. So let us see if one of your answers was correct. I. I'm pretending to be a modern day game show host, meaning dramatic pauses. Yes. The answer was 12. Jeannie, you are a. Yay! Congratulations. Everybody give Jeannie a hand. Yay! 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 Johnny, Johnny, tell Jeannie what she has won today. Well, Jeannie, you are going home with a year's worth of all new barbecue ranch flavored Tide Pods. Yummy! A brand new Magnavox laser disc player. Wow! 25 pounds of olives from Ronnie's Olives. A handful of napkins from the Arby's across the street. An autographed picture of Lindsay Buckingham. <laughs> Gone with the wind on Betamax. A year's worth of stool softeners. A two-year supply of all-new stool hardeners. Hey, you know, to even them out, to even them out, you know, you take the both of them, you take the both of them, and then you've got like, you take them both at the same time, and you've got the battle of Naboo uh, happening in your intestines. <laughs> Eddie Brock's horrible accent from the new Venom trailer. Two guys with handlebar mustaches, and of course, a copy of the home game. The new book by John Grisham, a best-selling author who in 2014 came to the defense of men who are arrested for watching child porn. That's a true <laughs> fact. You can bing it. Back to you, Steve. Well, thank you, Steve. And now that we've gotten that done and over with, it's homework time yet again on the old Pope on Film podcast. <laughs> <clears throat> People of the internet, your attention, please. Cease your blogging and is it chocolating and kindly pay attention. There are these YouTube videos and they have uh, two different wrenches and you got to see which one is a real wrench and which one is just made of chocolate. Okay. Bunch of videos and they're pretty good. Each week, the dreaded Council of Bunnies selects a homework assignment via the fiery ritual of carousel. <laughs> and this week we continue to watch old school B movies that are not strong enough, that are not big enough to carry an entire episode of the Pope on Film podcast on its own. So we're taking this little preemie and we're raising it to term right here in this segment. And this week I am going completely blind, having never seen... This 1963 technically Martian movie, yeah. The Day Mars Invaded Earth. Bunny, did you like this? And had you seen it before? Have you heard of it before? Have you anything? I I had not seen it before, which was kind of a surprise. Uh, or maybe I have because I did get brief moments of like deja vu. Um, 
I I I kind of I kind of I liked it in the context of the movie itself, like the time period and things like that. But other than yeah. that, you know, kind of crap. I I had absolutely no prior knowledge of this film before this weird early 60s sci-fi film before this episode of the pope on film i was just i was just on youtube and i was looking for movies preemie movies for us to do for homework and this one caught my eye usually i at least have a little bit of uh prior knowledge of a film when we do it you know but not this time i had never heard of it i had no idea uh, one thing I will say that I really, really, really liked about the film is that if I squinted, uh, Vincent Price starred in this film. Oh, nice. If I, if like I took my con, if I took my glasses off and I squinted, Vincent Price starred in the day Mars invaded earth. So you, you, you saw a much better movie than I did. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Much better movie. Yeah. The this film, The Day Mars Invaded Earth, nineteen sixty three, was actually a second feature, and okay. also featuring. It ran last in a double feature, with, of all movies, the Elvis Presley film, Kissing Cousins. Okay. <laughs> How you doing? It's me, the King of Rock and Roll, Mister Elvis Presley. Come see me in my brand new film where I try to fuck my relatives. <laughs> it's hardcore incest, Memphis style. Yeah. That was back when that was okay to do, I guess. Elvis made so many movies, but like how many do people remember? I had never heard of Kissing Cousins before. And it's weird because I would imagine I would have seen this movie before because Elvis plays an Elvis type character and his hillbilly twin brother. Oh, okay. So it's like a, it's like a Donna Reed sort of situation. Yeah. This Elvis has only seen the sights and Elvis can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. (laughs) I, I, I liked the film, I guess for what it was, like you said, this film is like a really slow burn. Yeah. No, but I found it to be suspenseful in that, you know, you're not fully in on the plot or what's going on at all until like more than halfway through the film. At first, the plot just revolves around some scientists landing a rover on Mars. And And so what with the film? The film is called The Day Mars Invaded Earth. So you're expecting hot alien action. Yes. Yes. And instead... You just go all blurry. Yeah, it's like a, it's a switcheroo. The day Mars invaded Earth. Oh, this is going to be good. Oh, shit. No, this is a quiet, slow, noir thriller. Yes. Wrapped in a family drama. You know, mm-hmm. it's a, it, it, it surprises you. It sneaks up behind you. It crawls you. <laughs> you know? That's what I liked about it. I said, oh, the day Mars invaded Earth. This will be amazing. And then you just get this, like, quiet little thriller. That was surprising to me. I was taken I was taken by surprise by this film, and that doesn't happen a lot. No. You know? No. But It was very what? reminiscent reminiscent of Invasion of the Body Snatchers as well. Yeah, yeah. Some website I saw somewhere said Invasion of the Body Snatchers meets uh, Invaders from Mars. Yeah. Is what I... Fair. Yeah. But one thing, one thing you gotta love about this film, one thing you absolutely gotta love is the fact that this movie was filmed in Greystone Manor. Oh! Yeah, Greystone Manor, the mansion in Beverly Hills where they also filmed Dark Shadows, Rush Hour, The Big Lebowski, X-Men, and even Gilmore Girls. This mansion was uh, uh, was Chilton. Uh Uh-huh. They turned Greystone Manor into Chilton. It was also uh, Professor X's mansion. It was uh, the Dark Shadows. It was the, the rich place where the porn people... 
were partying in, in the Big Lebowski. No, no, this this was where the Big Lebowski lived. He lived in Greystone Manor. So, so yeah, super super famous, super famous locale. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. There there was a ridiculous list of the things that were filmed in Greystone Manor. I just picked the ones that I was most excited about. I didn't know about Chilton. No. But that is yeah. kind of a big are, deal. Yeah. We are we are for those of you who are listening to this for the first time, we are big Gilmore Girls fans here on the Pope on Film podcast. Yes, we are. Long-standing history with Gilmore Girls. So this was filmed the day Mars invaded Earth, this was filmed in 1963. So, help me out here, Bunny. Am I right in thinking this is all about dirty, evil, communist sons of bitches? I would hazard a guess and say yes. Okay. Because unlike most alien invasion films out there, oh, the aliens are coming, we must defeat them, and oh no, they're defeating us, we must come up with some strange way to defeat them at the last second. Now we are winning. But this film is 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 about paranoia. Yes. This film is about paranoia and fear, and you can't trust yourself, and you can't trust the ones you love because the aliens look just like us, and they're hiding amongst us. It could be he, her, or it could be you. So, <laughs> like, I, I wasn't sure. I don't know. I, I'm not 100% on top of uh, my history, but I was pretty sure that this whole film was just dirty red scum that sort of a thing yeah that was 63 right mm -hmm. yeah so good so so the day mars invaded earth i was looking for information about it and oh my god i did i find some information let's get intellectual as fuck all up in here all right we're gonna get seriously fucking intellectual y'all I'm a name drop, a bomb ass bitch here. <laughs> Susan motherfucking Sontag. Yeah. Susan Sontag wrote an essay in 1965 called The Imagination of Disaster. It was uh, primarily about in the movie Invasion of the Body Snatchers and the fear of the invisible invader. And she praised this film. The Day Mars Invaded Earth. She praised this film and its ending. So, noise. Nice. You know? Noise. N O I C E. Noise. Noise. I, I, I liked this film. It was a surprising, I thought it was a surprisingly good film. And it does things differently than other sci-fi films of its day, because other sci-fi films, you see the alien landing and lasers. And shit. Yeah. And, and when I was a headliner in Paris, they always, audiences always liked it when I sparkled. <laughs> you know, like antenna and stuff like that. But, but this film is, 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 is different. Yes. And, and then like, and then they kill off the boyfriend and I was like, oh, hey, that, that's, that's surprising. I wasn't expecting that. And then there's not a sappy ending at the last second. <laughs> Oh, you know, no, no. That was, that was also another positive. There's not a, there's not a sappy ending at the last second to placate white American audiences. I quite enjoyed myself with this film for what it was, and I would recommend it. In fact, I recommend it so much that I'm trying not to reveal too much about the the film's plot. I I was quite surprised by where this film went. Yes, and I, I think I can recommend it as well. Um, we've seen worse. And we'll be getting yeah. to that oh. later. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, one negative I will say, one negative I will say about this that I found to be absolutely hilarious is that let me explain to you what white privilege is. Okay. White privilege is a family that's trapped due to a malfunctioning security gate around their mansion. Don't touch that. Go there. 
Oh, no, we can't get out because our security gate is malfunctioning. Oh, fuck that. (laughs) That's some serious white privilege shit there, you know? Like, Jesus Christ. Just keep her here and don't what, touch anyone. What, what, did, what did Eleanor get into? Smell it. Uh, how did she? Uh, you know what? Oh, you yeah. go ahead and, and clean that up. Eleanor, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Uh, uh, it, it, Eleanor has made a huge mess, and Natasha wants to keep the mess centered in a specific spot. So, come here, El. No, no, no. Don't touch that. Just stand over here. Come here. Come here. It's time for the Eleanor Show! No, don't climb on me. You're already getting so much of this stuff on me. Come here. It's time for the Eleanor Show! Eleanor, say hi! Eleanor, say hello to Bunny! It's Bunny! Hi, Eleanor! It's okay, don't touch, don't touch, don't touch. She's already touched so much. Come here, it's okay. Sorry, y'all. Steve has this candle that he loves to smell. And apparently Eleanor has decided she loves to smell like that candle. And since okay. it's nice and warm, she decided to stick her fingers in it. Use it like lotion. <laughs> to be fair, though, I smell amazing right now. Don't rub it on you. You get a waxy sheen. You know how I was going to be? Yeah, a waxy sheen. I'm the cousin of Charlie Sheen. I'm a waxy sheen. Do you also not <laughs> I mean, uh, recognize me when you want to him. Yeah, I, I. It's because uh, he doesn't have the tiger blood that I do. I have yeah. tiger blood. Oh, you mean the AIDS blood? But no, do you, tiger but, blood. But do you have dragon energy? No, dragon energy sounds like a ninety-nine cent energy drink that you would find at a Dollar General in Good Tucson, job. Arizona. Yes. Okay, she's so she's less greasy. That's good. A lot less greasy. Good. Good. And that is it for homework this week. And we sincerely hope that your eyes, minds, and legs have all been suitably opened by this homework. But don't think you're getting out of here that easily, Buck Chacho. Buck Chacho, a combination of Bucko and Muchacho, verbal copyright 2018, Reverend Steve and the Pope on Film Podcast. All rights reserved. Don't forget next week's homework assignment. And for next week, we are once again taking a preemie movie and raising it to term right here on the homework assignment by watching what some consider. We're watching a B movie Mm -hmm. that some consider to be a pioneering, boundary-pushing work of 1970s sci-fi and what others call a ridiculously stupid piece of shit. Uh Uh-huh. Okay, good. I am talking about, and I found a copy, and I'll punch it to you, the 1970 sci-fi film Equinox. Equinox. Okay, I have seen Equinox before. This is going to be kind of tough. I've seen Equinox a long time ago, but I don't remember a damn thing. So, yeah, no, this will be fun. And I'm excited about this. I'm excited about Equinox. (laughs) That is next week. Be sure and join us next week for more homework with the Pope on Film Podcast. And cut on that.